Three, two, one. Here we are. Irina, hello. Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm just uh, finished the um, my working day, but uh, slowly limping towards the weekend uh, like an asthmatic ant with heavy shopping. Anyway, how, how are you? What's going on? Great. I'm in the countryside, so I enjoy uh, freedom here. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, by the way. Yeah, nice to Finally. meet you. Finally. Yeah, we should probably explain to the folks watching uh, slash listening that um, this is the first time we've ever met. We've never spoken before. Well, only like, you know, um, by like texting on, on, on VK. Um, but yeah, this is just a completely random encounter. Um, I think once upon a time you were very kind uh, and you did like a repost for me about my speaking club and and then I just wrote you the other day, said, do you want to come on my podcast? And you were like, yeah. <laughs> and Thank you so much. I'm grateful. No, that's no I problem. I appreciate being here. No, that's, that's, a, that's a, my, my great pleasure. So before we, we get started, let's just um, it, remind people about your page on VK. Just if they want to find out about your stuff and about your content, they can visit you mm -hmm. there. It's called, um, I'm trying to remember the name now, We Prepare for Cambridge CPE, yeah? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> something like that. So, uh, CPE cool. preparing for the exam. Some, uh, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would uh, say a couple of words about it, okay? Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm actually a teacher of English, but I mostly work with young learners. And from time to time, when I feel that my language is not that good, um, I try to work on it and it's really hard for me. I'm not that organized. So exams are like crunches for me. <laughs> they help me to organize the process. And uh, this group, I created it uh, several years ago. I don't remember exactly like three or four years ago. Um, uh, while preparing for the exam, it was like a notebook for me to, and again, people who were following, they organized me in a way, it was uh, some responsibility already. And now we are like 2,500, which is amazing, really. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, once that I did, I took the exam and I passed it. I received uh, the certificate, but my result was not that great. Uh, nothing actually to be proud of, except for use of English, which was A. Um, <laughs> thank you. Excellent. So uh, th thanks to this result, I actually squeezed through because the rest was really advanced, not that proficiency. Mm -hmm. and, and so now uh, I feel that I'm again gradually down with my language, so I need uh, some work to be done. And uh, so I'm going to take another chance <laughs> nice. to try to manage it one more time. So I think in summer I'm going to... Um, either in summer or in, uh, in autumn I'm going to take it. So I need some half a half a year, I think, for preparation again. Yeah, fair enough. If if you if you do it far enough in the future, hopefully it'll be back to the normal format. But at the moment, there's a lot of people doing electronic exams. Um, yeah, that's hard for me actually. I don't know if it's hard or easy or like the software sounds pretty interesting. Um, I'm speaking to a girl in one of my speaking club groups um, who she did it, I don't know which exam center it was, somewhere in Yucatita Borgen, she did CAE, she got an A, so shout Great. out to Nastya, well done Nastya, you got an A. Um, cool. Nothing to do with me, by the way, she said it, that I helped, I didn't, it was all her, it was all her. Uh, uh, it's gone with this, <laughs> both, both parties are involved. 
more more the student. I I personally think the teacher has very little to do with it. But uh, well, well, we can talk about that in a second. <laughs> um, but she said um, that the software is pretty interesting. Like, for example, when you're doing reading or use of English, you can you can have your notes and you can write stuff down on paper if you want. But you can also highlight. Um, mm -hmm. and you can like you know cut and paste and do, do all sorts of crazy stuff so um you know it sounds like maybe it's um in some ways it's even preferable to pen and paper because you you know you type much more quickly than you write and your hand gets really tired uh and some people i mean personally my handwriting is terrible it looks like a spider has just walked in ink and then walked <laughs> on my page it's uh it's not the uh... best. I'm a person who uh, works with books, course books, and papers. I've got a <laughs> paper here as well. So nice. I'm so used to this format that uh, computer-based exam is a little bit more challenging for me. I believe that some, some things could be done easier and maybe smoother, but probably not all of it. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm not used to this kind of uh, format. Well, I would uh, try uh, probably. Pe people, people don't like change. People are resistant to change, so maybe. They yeah, this is our brain how it works. It is really resistant. Big time. So, um, wh where are you based, by the way? You, uh, I can't remember from your VK page. You from Moscow? Uh, I moved to Moscow this summer, and oh, nice. I wasn't there before. Not not far away from Moscow. In Tver. Tver. Nice, nice. I've never visited. Um, I've got for some reason I have a lot of students from from that um, town. Oh, great! Um, I don't know why. Shout out to Shir. Hello, to you. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. Because I think a lot of my students are from Moscow and Petersburg, so I guess just anywhere from the Golden Ring. They, but um, I had an opportunity when I was at university. I had an opportunity to uh, go and study in uh, Shir University. Wow. Uh, I didn't in the end. I chose a different one. I went to ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I went to Yaroslavl University in the end. Um, so I went to see uh, Yarik. And, and but you have some connection with Tver. So yeah. I, I mean, um, I mean, students come. You had this opportunity. You should go there probably. Yeah. It's a nice <laughs> town. Like a, I like, like it. A pilgrimage. <laughs> I could do yeah. a good pilgrimage. Yeah, maybe, maybe. What's what's Tver famous for? What what, what do you have? Famous for, um, well, we have uh, a lot of people who visited it because it is uh, between Moscow and St. Petersburg. So all the uh, Tsar and uh, other popular people like uh, Pushkin uh, spent a lot of time in uh, Tver and uh, in the region. Uh, so uh, also uh, Saltikov, Shidrin, Krylov. I don't know if you know all these writers, uh, oh, Russian yeah. writers. Yeah, you do. Great. Did you study Russian yes. in the university? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Russian. In Russia. Yeah. In Yarik. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Um, in uh, in Yaroslavl, in Petersburg as well, for a little bit. Um, but yeah, in fact, I there's um, I made a reference. Did you ever watch my? I don't know if you go on my page at all, but I made a video I about mushrooms. And in the video about mushrooms, I mentioned this uh, sort of thing <laughs> because he he had this quote about Nazvalsa Grusin Okay. Uh, wow. So talking about how to say Grus in English and like, uh, which is milk mushroom, by the way. So milk yeah, mushroom. Shout out know. to Sofikov Shindrin if anyone's interested in milk mushrooms. Yeah, it's a, it's a good time of year for collecting mushrooms and learning mushroom vocabulary. Indeed. Okay. Well. Obviously, thanks for um. Because I know we, we we when we were talking about setting up this um this episode, I asked you, do you want to do it in English or do you want to do it in Russian? And even though, because you explained to me that just now that you feel that your English, your spoken English, is getting down again, so you want to improve it at the moment. Yeah, and it's even, not... even so, you still wanted to do the show in English, which is uh, um. I can switch to Russian. <laughs> no, it, it's it's uh, it's no problem. Uh, you, you you're doing. 
extremely well. I don't know what you're worried about. I can't imagine how stratospherically good your English was if, if this is... I mean, uh, for proficiency level, you have to overload your speech with um, very sophisticated vocabulary and you should be... And uh, when I am not in good shape, it's like fitness for me, you know? <laughs> CPE, CAE, it's like fitness for my language. Yeah. So when uh, I'm not in good shape, I use some basic vocabulary. I am uh, probably fluent enough to, uh, to speak of, of the cough like that, but uh, I can't express probably all the thoughts and uh, that I, I am planning to. And uh, I'm not satisfied with it. And I feel uh, when it is uh, lower, it's probably it gets lower than the advanced level and I feel a little bit dissatisfied already. I, but we, we've all been there. I mean, people like me, like you, who um, just, you know, for them, language is, is everything. Um, you're, you're never happy. You'll never feed yeah. a wolf, you know. <laughs> I will, I'm, like, I remember when I first started speaking or studying, sorry, Russian, I would have been like over the moon if I could just have a conversation in Russian. Right. And have a conversation in Russian. And then I was like, okay, now I want to have like an hour long conversation. I did that. Now I want people to, now I want to have a doctor's appointment in Russia. I did that easy. Now I want to have a phone conversation, order a pizza and do all of this stuff more and more complicated. Crazy people. <laughs> yeah, I know. But now I'm, 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 now I'm annoyed. If anyone, if I'm like in Russia and someone asks me, where are you from? Because they hear my accent. I get annoyed with myself. Like, oh, you made mm -hmm. a pronunciation mistake um you'll you'll never you'll never feed the wolf you'll never um satisfy yourself yeah it's like you I know, can relate to it yeah 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 um but i think that's um you know people like me and you and and uh volvo who i was speaking you know volvo yeah volvo uh, pavlovich from uh, yeah, yeah i i saw some short passage from your podcast oh yeah yeah so uh, for people watching we're taping this show before the first episode has come out so uh yeah but yeah. Uh, by the time that this episode goes online um that one will have already come out so um wow that was a complicated use of future yeah <laughs> that's great <laughs> by the way uh, this was one of my um, uh, disappointments about uh, cambridge exams that um, um when i want to work in my uh, language uh mm. I prefer to work on grammar as well, but uh, you actually don't need to revise all the grammar, I mean, all the grammar bank <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. in order to take the exam. It's like uh, you, you will meet some structures, uh, you will need uh, some knowledge of grammar in, uh, any, in some exercises, uh, but it's not that uh, you should uh, revise everything. And I was a little bit disappointed about that because uh, I feel that I also lose this knowledge. I mean, I used to be so good at the university, but now I keep forgetting things. Mm. So my plan was to uh, dive into grammar this time, uh, this time yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to start from the grammar I mean, uh, people say that you don't need to uh, know grammar nowadays. I mean, it's not that important. Probably vocabulary is more important than all these collocations and chunks and so on. And grammar is something uh, not that uh, useful and not that important. Uh, it's only grammar Nazi <laughs> who uh, follow all these rules and so on. But... I feel a little bit um, not, I don't know, not, not that effective, not uh, that good in language when I lose grammar. It's like basics, I think. Well, I mean, and again, that's to say that only grammar Nazis need to learn grammar. That's a very simple no, of way of, of putting it, because, of course, grammar is completely arbitrary, of course. And like, so... I mean, Russians in particular are very, very almost aggressively prescriptive when it comes to grammar, which means that they say there's one answer, there's one way, it's in the back of the book, learn it. So, for example, like, you know, there's some, some people say, like, 
<laughs> and some people say for Zwoniusz. And like, of course, the first option is quote unquote correct, but there's there's nothing there's nothing more or less understandable about one word and the other. Like some people say, um, you need to speak with correct grammar so that you're more understandable. No, that's not true. That is not true. You can make as many mistakes as you want. And sometimes- Nazi making... people. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, so I did a lesson in Campfire about poetry and I said, read out some poetic lines. And then I read this, I said, um, how about this poetic rhyme from a famous rap song, U nas na rayonie ni zwoniata zwoniev. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm sorry, but that is that is a poetic statement. By making a quote unquote mistake, you have given that word more meaning, more subtext than it would normally have. Um, so, you know, more prestigious or less prestigious forms, it doesn't mean that, you know, you, you're, um, you, you're more or less understandable. Some people say that, um, you know, you've got to, for example, with word stress, they say you've got to have the word stress in the correct place, um, otherwise um, it doesn't sound nice. Like, no, not that's not true either. Like a good example, like, so I know that the correct pronunciation of this word is marketing, but mm -hmm. marketing is easier to say and it just sounds better. It's like, um, you know, shadil shadil, like is another mm -hmm. example. Like, um, the, sometimes the best, the correct pronunciation by the grammar book doesn't sound good and is more difficult to say. Um, but yes, having said that, um, you are correct, of course, that you definitely need to have grammar as as some of your fundamental building blocks when you start learning the language. Structure, probably. Of course, of course, learning those structures, you are your. You can try and learn it organically if you want. Try and learn it from the bottom up like a child does. But good luck. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, um, <laughs> there's a reason that these books exist and people pay money for them and that there's, there's approaches and there's, there's different syllabi and, and, and study plans because that's, that's what works. And of course, that language and, and all of these structures and all this grammar is an accident. It's like, it's like a big bang. Um, it doesn't depend on culture, doesn't depend on anything. It's almost entirely random. And our, what we call grammar is a post factum extrapolation, trying to recognize these patterns. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, I don't know how else you would, you would learn it. I don't know. So what about you then? What, what, what would, what's your favorite and least favorite topics to study in English? Uh, are we still about grammar? <laughs> Um, maybe, whatever, you can interpret the question as you like. <laughs> uh, so, uh, right now I feel that I lack uh, grammar revision, let me call it this way, uh, but uh, I don't think that this is uh, so important without vocabulary which can fill it, yes, all these structures. Uh, so, uh, I will speak probably about vocabulary. And uh, I enjoy learning language uh, and uh, preparing for Cambridge exams uh, because they have all these uh, interesting texts for inquiring minds. I mean, I enjoy reading any text uh, in a course book uh, for CPE, for CAE. Uh, they, uh, rise so important and uh, interesting and very often controversial topics. Uh, so this is what I enjoy most in uh, learning language and in uh, uh, to having this tool, this skill, and which gives me an opportunity to dive into the topic, to find some more resources and to study the question. I learned so many things by learning language. Mm -hmm. So that's what I enjoy most, most, <coughs> sorry. And I can't say that uh, some topic, uh, uh, speaking for, uh, about vocabulary, that some topic is more interesting for me. I am really a communicative person and I can discuss uh, a lot of topics with people. Uh, it depends really how it goes and uh, I enjoy everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but my listening, 
uh, as for this time that I was preparing for the exam, my listening was really poor, not enough for the proficiency level. Uh, and uh, I had to work harder on it. Uh, and I used to listen to a lot of podcasts, like probably one of uh, these, uh, like you do. And uh, uh, on various topics, there are so many uh so many opportunities to find something that interests you. Uh, and I can say that I surrounded myself with uh, so huge uh, heaps of information uh, that I, were, I managed to, uh, to improve my language just drastically, <laughs> dramatically, but really. Osmosis. Yes, yeah. I was really satisfied. But even even so, at the exam, uh, I had uh, I struggled actually. So yeah. especially in the last exercise. Um, what was the last exercise? I mean, when you have um, so, uh, small passages uh, of interview, and uh, you have to read the. Um, uh, six variants and you have to match them mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I I don't know why I have some uh, kind of brain that I can't listen and read uh, uh, mm -hmm. simultaneously and I really have difficulty in this so I would probably recommend to practice it more for those who are not good at, at it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and actually, uh, speaking about the exam, I think that uh, you should practice uh, doing the tests in the format uh, as it is going to be uh, the exam, because uh, uh, these very exercises, uh, they are really specific and uh, you should be ready to react or maybe you, you should find your own strategy and you know your own tactics for it how how would it better for you to uh, follow the exercises and so on so maybe it's very you important find your own tactics but only if it's a good tactic <laughs> there's a danger <laughs> that what you're doing is complete nonsense and uh and, and it won't work but but yeah you're i think only the quantity can show only the quantity of the tasks done can show if your text, uh, tactics works mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've kind of frozen. It. Oh, no, you're back there. The Just quantity of tests that yeah. you... Oh, Is it okay? Had a little bit of lag in the connection there. Just to explain to the guys watching, uh, Irina's currently at the Dacha now. Well, I think in the Dacha, I don't know. In the countryside, at least. Um, so, is, is your connection okay, that, Irina? It, it must be okay. Is it okay this way? Uh, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. We'll, we'll keep going and see, see how we do. Um, Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. So, why don't we talk a little bit about... Um, not necessarily um, about exams in particular, but just when you when you're looking for some resources. So you say that you surrounded yourself with big piles of resources, and you just you just soak in all of this vocabulary, all of this um, grammar. Um, wh what's your go-to sources if you want to find some videos, some articles, some podcasts? Where where do you go? Because on your page is just an immense quantity of resources. I don't know where you find it all. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, I like to find for information. I am like a spy. <laughs> um, I, I actually uh, asked a lot of people. I used to search even hashtag uh, CPE and uh, I used to find people who had this experience and I wrote uh, uh, private messages to them and asked for information, how they did, uh, what was the most challenging about it and what uh, their advice could be. 
Mm -hmm. So this was one resource. And uh, I, I also would write uh, posts in some uh, teachers' communities mm -hmm. and ask for advice in these communities. And people are really kind to share their experience and to share information. So I'm really grateful. Uh, and uh, as for uh, when I work uh, with some topics, uh, I like to work uh, on the vocabulary on every on the language topic by topic. For example, I, I'm interested in, I don't know, some environmental problems. Uh, and I look... Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> For example, Cookie is interested in environment. I'm sorry, <laughs> no one is interested in environmental problems. It's so important, but no one cares. It's so boring. No, I try to recycle. Really, in my daily life, I try to recycle, reuse, and to oh be... yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I recycle 100. You definitely got to recycle I, I re and look after your water and electricity consumption. But it's not fun to talk about. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I agree with you totally. And uh, still, I, I have to learn uh, some things uh, in order to to have a conversation on the topic, mm. and not to just say to uh, to sentences about my recycling <laughs> and just leave the room. Uh, so I had to watch some documentaries and so on. So I uh, go. Uh, on YouTube, it's very often YouTube, so I go there and I also use Youglish. Uh, have you heard of this site, Youglish? Youglish. It's like YouTube yes, in English. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so and I just and I just search words like uh, it can be re uh, even idioms or phrases that I uh, meet and. Uh, or just some random words that appear in my head, <laughs> and oh. I just and I just when I have uh, time and I want to entertain myself probably even so I just tried some words and I click 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 and find a video and then this video brings me to another one and sometimes this is this way how I learn English because I'm. I get tired of sitting over the cost books all the time so. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is one of the another resource. So, and I also uh, track uh, information on Facebook uh, in uh, the similar uh, communities uh, of people who are uh, prepare for the exam or who have passed it already, and they uh, share this information. So, I I, I was uh, right now. I'm a little bit. Uh, if you uh, go on my page, you will see that I'm not that active nowadays because I had this uh, moving to Moscow and uh, my son went to school and I have this uh, time of family time right now mm -hmm. and I'm not that active on internet. But uh, when I was active, I, um, I think I tracked all the information appearing uh, on internet. Mm -hmm. That's so great. just inquiring mind. <laughs> quite right, quite right. And um, why why the move to Moscow, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it's because of my husband's job. He changed uh, the location, so we packed <laughs> and followed him. What, what does he do? Uh, he's a manager in a company, in a building company, in a construction company. All right, all right. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I am um, going back to what you were saying about listening to um, podcasts and listening to shows and stuff like that. And ab about your personal struggles with the um, with the CPE listening test. Um, I think you're, you're definitely uh, right to bring it up because a lot of people underestimate just how important listening is. People forget that the the step the first step towards good pronunciation, towards good fluency, towards good vocabulary is good reading and good listening. Without yeah. one, you cannot have the other. But reception comes before production, always. Yeah. Always. Um, and it's also like part of like what having a good conversation is all about. 
that's what I try to do in in you know my whole campfire like mentality. It's all gathering around the campfire and just talking about loads of nonsense and like and I've I've spent a lot of time trying to understand how is the best way to have a conversation with someone, trying to perfect the art of having a conversation. And I'm still terrible at it. I interrupt people. I speak over people. I get into arguments and fights with people. I'm a moron and I, I can't do it properly. But the, the only thing that you can do to guarantee you will have a good conversation, even with all of the fighting and butting in and interrupting, is listening. Like, you are listening to me very carefully and I'm listening to you very carefully. And that's all you need. As long as you listen, if you, if you just start talking with someone and you listen to them really really listen to them and really try and understand what they're saying people will tell you unbelievable things about themselves people will open up and just connect with you on such a human level and i'm 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 so happy about it because with all of this you know people these days they just communicate on whatsapp and 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 you know social media which is great but have you noticed that like your old friends from school or university, like they're so close that they're far. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, they're, they're, they're on contact. Actually, I could write to them anytime I want. And so you never write to them. And yeah. like to be able to just like gather around the campfire and, and actually have a deep, deep conversation and connect with someone on a human level. It's, it's the best thing in the world. I love yeah. it. I, I love people. I love listening to people i love hearing people's stories i love finding out people's lives and histories and personalities it's it's the best thing in the world don't you think yeah i agree with you and uh, this is what we are lack nowadays really with all these social medias and internet we lack real communication and real conversations mm. yeah i agree with you mm. so yeah and especially when it comes to like the political side of things because like all the social uh, we keep blaming social media but don't forget social media is a private company they're, they're all private companies and we're the consumers so it's not social media changing us it's us being morons and um, yeah. using social media in the wrong way you can't abuse it uh, and you can't get your news from social media you can't get your political opinions from social media because it's like when, when you're speaking, so let's say, for example, if you're like a super pro Putin person, I'm not saying you are, but for example, if you were mm -hmm. and you speak to some super like anti Putin guy and they listen to each other and they try and have this conversation and it's just like, oh, my God, this other person is such an idiot. Uh, <laughs> Do they not see the same news that I see? Do they not have the same information that I have? And the answer is no. No, they don't. <laughs> they, you have literally have different worldviews because of what yeah. you showing you in Facebook and all of these. Countries. Yeah, because of this context advertisements, then they get context mm -hmm. information. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. This is we are consumers, and we are very often not um, that in the process we are not conscious we are not in ourselves so we are like mm -hmm. running or rushing somewhere and we do not have time to just stay to listen to ourselves and mm -hmm. to uh, to go deeper into ourselves our thoughts our feelings we are just uh, Sure. like these squirrels in a world <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean th but that's when you're you're most vulnerable when you're not really paying attention like when I'll, I'll open like for me youtube is the big one youtube and instagram they're the big ones for me they're the ones i'm most addicted to and i'm, I'm definitely i'm like so i open my phone so I, and i'm taking measures against it so i have all of my my normal folders here and that's social media <laughs> And the icon for that folder is a little needle, like, you know, the syringe mm -hmm. emoji, because it's 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 an addiction. It's addiction. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, and I'll I'll, like, I'll open YouTube, and then I say no. I've been on YouTube too much today. I'll close the app. You know, when you swipe up and close it, like you force force it to close, and then ten seconds later, without even realizing it, I'm on YouTube again. <laughs> how the hell did I do this? Like I can't stop myself. I can't control myself. I'm like I'm, I'm like a heroin addict or something. It's yeah. unbelievable. You like 
Um, and uh, have you seen that documentary, by the way, on Netflix, The Social Dilemma? No, I haven't. You've got to check it out. It's about all of this stuff. I will, I will put um, it down. Yeah, yeah. Share it on your page and tell the world because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's really cool. But a re there was a really good point that, um, so this was like one of the engineers at Google, an ex-engineer from Google, um, was talking about. And he was saying that... Um, a lot of the time we blame ourselves for being too addicted to social media and like always clicking on the next video and always engaging with the content. But also you've got to remember that on the one side of this screen is you and maybe you're tired. Maybe you've had a couple of glasses of wine. Maybe you, you can't be bothered to do any work. And on the other end of the, that phone is literally billions and billions of dollars of technology and the most intelligent scientists and engineers on the planet. Their only job is to make you click on that next video. Manipulate. So, yeah. 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 This is saddening. Well, I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's, I mean, social media is great. I, I think and YouTube's great and... Um, you know, without social media, you know, I couldn't have launched my speaking club and you couldn't have spread all of that great content about CPE preparation and you couldn't watch those videos. So it's def I think it definitely does more good than it does harm, but it does do harm. Yeah, it does do harm. And I think, uh, I think I'm thinking about our brain right now. So how we, it changes and it transforms uh, mm -hmm. due to this uh, spending uh, to this uh, social media and other apps that uh, we scroll all the time and we uh, uh, consume so much of information and the flow is really intense and it's uh, our brain is multitasking and it has to switch from one exercise to another from one uh, uh, object to another and uh, it it has to use so much energy on it and mm -hmm. our body is actually economical system and so uh, when we have uh, such an energy consuming thing uh, such energy consuming things uh, surrounding us uh, and uh, uh, this brings our brain to the fact that it hasn't got uh, ability to concentrate for long periods so we have this uh, attention span a shortened attention span like mm -hmm. uh, dory fish uh, effect <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, this is uh, how our brain changes and uh, we become different people thanks to social media and i think have you heard of micro learning uh, tendency micro learning mm -hmm. uh -huh. there is a tendency in uh, teaching um, so some people choose micro learning. That means that short lapse of time when they learn like 10 minutes during the day and then maybe 10 more minutes uh, in the evening or whatever. So just really short, um, uh, short periods of time that they are working so that they are concentrated, they are focused on their uh, task and so on. And this is actually what um, our brain needs nowadays nowadays and uh, so uh, this is first of all it's because of uh, this intense life that we have and secondly because our brains becomes uh, uh, incapable incapable of uh, doing long-term activities mm -hmm. so uh, it is different I mean our brain is really different uh, due to the fact that we consume just heaps and huge uh, masses of information we overload it i think and this is also something to think over but do, do you do you think it's that our brains have become altered by all of this stuff or do you think that so going back to social media then like i think that may, yeah maybe our brains have become altered but i don't know if it's that if social media has been around enough time for some sort of evolution to have taken place? Uh, not evolution yet, but probably some preliminary stage of it. Pre-evolution. Pre evolution. Pre -evolution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but having said that, like a lot of the features that 
like you know set off the uh, the dopamine going in your head the monkey brain relies on this primitive primate um reward system that we have in our brain when you do something good like you have some food or you know you, you have a contact with with the opposite sex or you you know you do whatever it sets off uh, you know some hormones going in your brain um, not hormones or um, endorphins going in your brain and tells you yes do more of that and so um for example you're talking about scrolling yeah so yeah. um you know when you're scrolling on like contact or, or instagram or something like that and you get to the top and you want to refresh it what do you do you pull it down like that and then there's this little thing that goes around like that and then it goes uh, and then it pops up again why do you think they have this little thing like you think that's like loading yeah it's loading it's waiting for the connection no they could they could load it up instantly if they wanted it's like it's like a fruit machine it's like a one arm bandit and it's that makes you more compelled to look and see what's the next um, news item, what's the next picture on Instagram that I can comment on or like. Um, it, like, and, and it's deliberate. It's there to keep your attention, and it's there. It's uh, manipulating this yeah. primitive part of your brain to do. Yeah, so. it's a huge manipulating machine. Mm -hmm. But that, that's that's why I think things like. If you like think about um, Facebook, Instagram, um, contact as well, um, you don't pay money for that, right? So that the whole point of those platforms these days is advertising. They are there, YouTube as well is a big one, that they make money from advertisers. It's a targeting tool. Mm -hmm. They're there to target you know, like um, I know that uh, people in Moscow uh, who like uh, blue sweaters and have blonde hair <laughs> like this particular brand of ice cream. So, oh, Irina's online. Bam, there's an ice cream ad, you know, <laughs> so accurate. And um, that's why I'm a big fan of something like, for example, Netflix, because net I pay money to Netflix. I'm Netflix's boss. And Netflix is going to show me all of the shows that I want to see. Otherwise, I'm going to buy a different service. You know? Yeah. So that's an example of something where they do, like, you know, use data and all this crazy stuff to find the best recommendation. But they're doing it in your interests, not in the advertiser's interest. Yeah, probably you're right. We have to choose we have to think it over and choose because uh, if you compare it with food, for example, you don't eat all the trash you meet, uh, everything that is bright and uh, I don't know, uh, sparkling. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, you will think of the things uh, that you are going to swallow, that you are going to consume, uh, but because it is your body and you will have um, the effect on your body in case you eat everything uh, you 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 see i don't know everything that smells good whatever uh, and uh, the same way is uh, with our brain i think we should just uh, take care of it otherwise uh, there are uh, so many uh, illnesses brain illnesses and mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I don't know what happens and uh, what is awaiting uh, in old age. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, when we become older. Mm -hmm. So I think this is very important uh, now, uh, probably to meditate or to have this detox uh, periods or whatever. I mean, like we should also... Like a technological detox, you mean? Yeah, technological or uh, smartphone detox. Do you do that? Do you do it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's challenging, but we should, I think. Because um, uh, if you try, I tried a couple of times. So if you try to uh, leave for, uh, a week without your smartphone, um, after two days, like you said, it is a, such a huge addiction. After two days, you will uh, be scrolling a book. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you have this uh, monkey system uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. you have this reflex in your body. So mm -hmm. uh, I think we should uh, take responsibility and uh, to guide our brain and to, uh, I don't know, to 
to think of what we are consuming. Yeah, but but yeah, I, I love your analogy with um, fast food, and um, I can't remember who came up with this. I think I might have heard this someone say it this way on another podcast, but. Um, so apologies for not attributing the quote, but um, he was talking about how um, it's the same like food. If, if you, your body's always building new cells and new, and new material and new tissue and stuff. And if you eat like, you know, like good, um, strong proteins and, and clean carbs and all the vitamins and minerals and all the stuff you need, all the amino acids and, and all of that stuff, then, you know, that, that's good, strong building blocks for your body to work with. If you're just going out eating Burger King every day and, and you know, Doshik for breakfast and God knows, you know, instant <laughs> coffee and all, all this horrible stuff. Um, by the way, I love instant coffee. Shout out to instant coffee. Um, then your body's like, OK, that's what we got to work with. And, and it, it'll build stuff, but it's, it's going to be with, you know, low quality building materials. It's the same with information. You've got to have a good information diet. You've got to make sure that you're taking in quality sources quality you know um authoritative yeah. views um uh, you know beautifully written text not just constant conflict and cat videos and and you know all, all of this um you know political rubbish life. yeah rubbish absolute rubbish mm -hmm. because then that's what your brain's got to work with it's got low quality building blocks to to build your intellect with so yeah i agree you've got to be um Mm -hmm. you know the closest thing the closest thing to a um a, a detox i think is if i go on a long train journey in russia that is so so i i used to mm -hmm. i used to teach in and uh, no internet connection <laughs> yeah well th there is a little bit because it depends where you are in the country i mean so i i used to get the, i used to teach in, when you're on the roof on the roof <laughs> So in um, <laughs> Tumen, I would get the train from Tumen to uh, Nizhny mm. do, do you know where that is? Nizhny wow. Uh, I have never been there, but of course I heard of this city. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't go. They built it in the <laughs> 1970s. That's all you need to know. Um, <laughs> but it's about a 21 hour train journey. So if for people who aren't familiar with Western Siberia, it goes uh, Tumen then it's like sort of Tabolsk, um, Surgut, uh, and then Nizhny Vartovsk is the end of the line. That's the last stop. So if you want to go mm -hmm. any further north, if you want to go to like Novuringuri, or you want to go to, I don't know, Salihat, you have to get a helicopter or, or drive or something, or a plane. Mm -hmm. um, right. And yeah, it was, it was very relaxing. I mean, I, I, I didn't really use smartphones much but when, I, when I lived in Russia, but I, just, you know, just on the train, there's nothing you can do. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it as much as you can with all of the drunk oil guys. <laughs> that, that, train, that was a special train. So I, there was either two situations. Either we were going from um, Chimin, going north, and all of the oil guys were going to their shift. So they were really depressed. So they were getting drunk. Or we were going south. And these guys were coming home, so they were celebrating. Either way, everyone's getting completely <laughs> wasted on the train. Uh, yeah, lots of warm uh -huh. water and uh, uh, yeah, smelly clothes. Sounds inspiring. Probably we should every now and then. Probably we should arrange this kind of trips to Nizhny Vartovsk <laughs> in terms of detoxication, technology detoxification. Yeah, if yeah, if you want to mm -hmm. not see super high tech surroundings, then Nizhny Vartovsk is a good place to go. It's it's a really nice place, and I had some great colleagues up there. Um, it's you know it's what you expect. It's an oil town. It's grey and ugly, yeah. but the people are un they're so nice, and um, there's some lovely nature nearby. You can really tell it's oil country. You go out of the. It town. must be cold there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. unbelievably cold. It was like. Um, I, w I was walking to work once and uh, where there's like the local government building there's this big thermometer well, for some reason there's like a clock and a thermometer and I looked at it once and it was minus 37 as I'm walking to work oh my goodness. Like, oh, like oh my god there's no way you can hide from that cold from that type of cold you can put on all the winter coats you want all the hats all the gloves but it's not it's not gonna happen it's not gonna it doesn't happen. work <laughs> Uh, you spend much I time don't like it. 
What did you ask, sorry? Have you spent much time in Siberia? I haven't been there. Never been there? Never been there. Got to check it out. Got to check yeah, it out. Probably in summer. Probably <laughs> in summer. Never in winter. Well, in, in winter, it's really cold. And in summer, you've got encephalitis to worry about because there's lots of... Okay. <laughs> so probably I would watch on TV, <laughs> on Spring. YouTube. On YouTube. Spring is a great time of year to go, I would recommend. Uh, spring, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I, I would like to. And actually, with this uh, COVID system, I've got a mask here. Uh, we are actually destined to travel inside the country more so probably we should go mm. well if you ever visit I, I saw a lot of pictures let me know let me know i can recommend mm -hmm. some places for you to visit okay nice i will message you definitely definitely anyway uh, it seems like your village connection and my village connection are getting a little bit l l less stable so um, we've been going pretty much an hour already. Um, time flies when you're having a good conversation. I've, I've tended. Yeah, to. I enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely. Well, let, let, listen. Let's. Um, the next time we have, if you'd be so kind to come on the show again, the next time we do another podcast, we can do the next one in Russian if you want. Um, yeah, great. Yeah. See, that see would be great. I, I will. I will try to catch your accent, and I will give you. Uh, I don't know the resume. What kind of accent do you have? <laughs> oh, probably all, all sorts. Some sort of crazy mix of Russian, Bulgarian, English, and Georgian. God knows what. What can you tell? What can you tell me about my accent? I can't be. Uh, I don't know. I can't really uh, assess my accent. Is well, there what kind of uh, notes you hear here? Um. That's a good question. I mean, so accents are always carried on the vowel sounds. Um, with high level speakers, um, what you often get is an exaggeration of uh, quote unquote very British English sounds. So, the, you know, these vowel sounds like or, ah, uh, uh, the high level speakers will really go to town and will really emphasize those ones. Um, so, um, that they'll say something instead of saying of course they'll say of course and that like really make it a throaty um, uh -huh. back, um i'm trying to think of like words where it's really noticeable um is it more american or is it just is it is it not american um well it depends which sound you're talking about americans uh tend to have a more sort of open throaty sound uh uh -huh. whereas british english uh or sort of English, English, the Queen's English. I don't, so I'm trying to say this uh, politically correctly. Um, mm -hmm. The R RP um, version of English would be sort of, you know, more uh, mm -hmm. close, closer to the front of the mouth. But yeah, it, it depends um, which, which sound you're talking about, of course. Uh, but no, um, no, no problems with, with accent. Don't and accent's not, a, <laughs> accent's not a bad thing. Um, you, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's... Um, People sometimes have this, uh, myself included, have this, um, you know, obsession with, um, you know, getting rid of your accent completely or sounding like a, a native speaker. You know, um, maybe, maybe that's a good idea, but um, not maybe, maybe you should just embrace. You, you can st you can have an accent and still speak with 100% correct pronunciation. Yeah, I'm not that obsessed about uh, uh, pronunciation. I just uh, wonder how it sounds. And uh, one more thing that I noticed, uh, after I listened to a lot of uh, British uh, information, uh, I start speaking more British-like. But uh, when I dive into American resources, mm -hmm. uh, I, tr I, I start imitating their uh, characteristics i don't know some nuances uh, so yeah. i i, I think, think that my accents change over the time it depends on mm -hmm. uh, where i am now <laughs> I, I do that mm -hmm. if, I, if i'm speaking to someone um from my sort of um from my part of the country where i'm from in the uk i'll start speaking with a slight regional accent very very slight very i mean the way that i speak english now 
um, I speak with almost no accent, someone who really, really knows what they're talking about, someone who's a real expert in dialectology, they could probably tell you that I'm from the Southwest by the way that I pronounce some of my words. But apart from that, I, I don't really have um, much. I, I, I wish I did have a regional accent. I think they're fun. I think they're interesting. But unfortunately, yeah, not. I agree. <laughs> All right. You know. Okay, thank you. That was interesting um, about the accent. That, well, great. We we can uh, we can resume this another time. So uh, thanks very much for coming and uh, enjoy your weekend at the. Thank Dachau. you for inviting. Okay, bye now. Mm -hmm.